Cardiovascular disease remains the number one killer globally and in the United States. There are millions and millions of deaths around the world from cardiovascular disease. About 11 million of those are probably due to environmental factors, and that's where exposomics can make a huge impact. We know that your genes are not everything. We know that where you live matters to your risk. A component of that risk is the environment, what you're breathing and what you experience in your neighborhood. Imagine a day that you walk into the doctor's office and the doctor not only measures your blood pressure or asks you if you're smoking, he or she will also have the tools to estimate to which environmental exposures you're exposed to and then tailor interventions. What excites me the most about exposomics is the potential for impact in cardiovascular disease. Exposomics is the study of environmental exposures on individuals and populations and how we can use that understanding to improve health outcomes. We're very interested in understanding how air pollution may precipitate heart failure, why it causes heart failure, how do we prove it. We're using a number of groundbreaking imaging techniques, pouring over MRI images to look for the signature of air pollution on the heart to look specifically for inflammation, to look at increased fluid levels in the heart that seem to be associated with heart failure outcomes. With this information, for the first time, we'd be able to say that air pollution does cause scarring of the heart. It is a risk factor for heart failure, and this is why. It gives us an avenue to prevent the harm that those exposures are causing. I'm studying how environmental exposures, such as air pollution, climate, noise, or green space around the house, affects the risk of cardiovascular diseases, such as stroke or acute heart attacks. We look at sound in the environment because it can induce stress and lack of sleep, and therefore affect cardiovascular risk. We're studying climate exposures, which are key factors in cardiovascular research. Both extreme high temperatures and extreme low temperatures can potentially increase the risk of mortality and cardiovascular disease. We study air pollution. We look at green space because green space can have a protective effect against cardiovascular disease because it provides an opportunity for exercise and exposure to a cleaner environment. We know that in neighborhoods of lower socioeconomic status, there are often higher levels of exposure. You can change the features of the neighborhoods. You can reduce exposures in these neighborhoods and therefore reduce disparities and reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease. A lot of my work has been to understand the patterns of exposure instead of assuming that everyone is exposed to the same thing really diving deep at trying to reconstruct what people have breathed in or what they've experienced. A key element of what we're able to do is go back in time and reconstruct exposures before people knew that they were sick. Rolling back the movie to see what were they exposed to before they developed disease, sometimes going back years into their past. It's important that we're able to reconstruct those peak exposures of a progression or advanced cardiovascular disease that can lead to bad outcomes like heart attacks and strokes. Now, we're able to understand and intervene to prevent exposures so that people don't get sick in the first place.